Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use your notes in Mem to create content like writing blog posts, planning video tutorials like this one, or even planning or outlining a podcast episode. And if you haven't checked it out, be sure to check out our free course on how to take smart notes. I'll be sure to include a link in the description below. Now let's get to the video. Before you can start using your notes in MEM to create content, there are a few foundational concepts that you need to understand. The first is that you have to accumulate a critical mass of knowledge. Now, what do I mean by that? Usually around 50 MEMs, you have enough knowledge inside of MEM or enough notes to create content using your notes. And that's because knowledge in networks compounds in value with every single note that you add. And that's why I always say the more you capture in MEM, the more you'll be able to create with your notes. But you also have to be very specific about the kinds of notes you take. I have said collecting quotes leads to useless notes. And it's nice that you can reference those types of notes and weave them into things like blog posts. But on their own, they're not very useful because they're written in your own words. But when you start to rewrite all of this information in your own words, like I say here, is they start to become like a set of digital Lego blocks. And you can combine them and build things with them and turn elements of previous creations into new ones. So as you can see here, even in this outline, a lot of this outline is based on existing notes inside of my database. So now let's go into the four different steps and then we'll get into a couple of examples. So the first step is to capture and organize your notes. And one of the things that Tiago Forte says in his book, Building a Second Brain, is that you want to separate, capture, and organize into two different steps. So why do we do that? Often when we capture something, we don't know how we're going to use it, where we're going to use it, or what the best place for it is. And so it's just important to capture the things you think you might be able to use and worry about how you're going to use them later. And a couple of different ways that you could do this, you can use Mem Spotlight to capture information from different sources. So for example, if we bring up a command L, in my case, this is what I set the command to be. If we were highlighting text from somewhere on the web, we would be able to capture it here. The other thing we can do is we can just use Mem Spotlight and capture ideas as they occur to us. So for example, this could be a new idea that just occurred to me. And then I would just press command enter and I would have that idea captured in my inbox. And the thing about doing this that's nice is that you can actually do this whether you're in Mem or not, as long as Mem is open, because ideas don't come to us linearly. But the other thing is often we're not ready to do anything about these ideas when we capture them. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing that you can do is use bi-directional links to capture new insights based on current notes. So for example, we're going through this note, but let's say, for example, I wanted to turn this note right here into a separate bi-directional link. What I could do is I could push that into a new mem. Now, one of the things that I tend to do is I add any bi-directional links that are empty to the inbox so that way I don't forget to process them. So that's how you separate, capture, and organize into two different steps. And this way, you're able to start building a much richer database of notes and just fill them out gradually as you go and let your thinking develop over time. And that way, you're not in this rush. You can take an atomic approach and develop small ideas with more depth. After you get done capturing and organizing ideas, the next piece is to connect them. And one of the best ways to do that is to build what Tiago Forte calls an archipelago of ideas. And if you haven't seen it, there's a video on how to create an archipelago of ideas on the channel here inside of Mem. But what this allows you to do is gather everything in one place so you're not starting from a blank page. So let's take a look at an example here of an article that I recently published. And what you'll notice here is that this article is pretty much already written. It's going to be published. It's part of a series about the things I wish I knew when I started doing different things, which was sparked by an idea that resulted from a conversation I was having with my roommate where we said, you know, what I wish I knew when I started a business. He said, you could do a whole series on this. So I actually started just jotting all my ideas down in map. Now you can see this article is fully written, but that's not how it started. Before even starting to write the article, the first thing I did was I actually gathered notes from different sources. So this is one book called Plays Well With Others by my friend, Eric Barker. This is another book by Terry Cole called Boundary Boss. This is another book called How Not to Die Alone. And you can see here that rather than uh, starting from scratch, I'm going through and I'm pulling all of this stuff together. So that way it speeds up the writing process dramatically. So I'm pulling everything that I could possibly want from different articles and podcast transcripts as well. 
And in addition to that, I grabbed all of my different notes that I'd taken uh, from reading these books. So for example, you can see here, if we go to this note, it says healthy boundaries protect us from emotional harm. And that was actually based on something I had read in Terry Cole's book, Boundary Boss. And I knew I wanted to use that because I knew that was going to be an important part of writing this article. And if you actually go and you look at the article now, what you'll notice is a lot of this stuff was woven into the article. But because I didn't have to keep sifting through mem or going to different places to find it, I was able to speed up the process of writing this article. And it was really just a matter of putting these notes in order. And as a result, I was able to write this article using all those notes and do it much faster than I ever thought it would be able to before. But not only that, I could approach it in small chunks and break this pretty big article up into small bite-sized pieces that were much more manageable than trying to say, for example, write this entire article from scratch. In fact, most of this article was based on existing notes that were already in the database that I had created on all these different books. So that's how you create an archipelago of ideas. And you'll notice here, I have just said, but what you'll notice here in the bullet points is that I have quotes from books, quotes from podcast episodes, and other notes that I've captured in them. Another thing that you can do when you want to start connecting ideas in order to create content is what Tiago Forte calls progressive summarization. And what that does is it allows you to identify key points within any source of information, and it makes it much easier to extract the information in any source that you want to use in an article. So for example, if we go to my podcast transcript here with Tiago Forte, you'll notice there are a lot of things in here that are actually in bold. And that way, when I want to use any of the content from this podcast transcript, I don't have to go and read through the entire transcript to find the things that I know I'll want to use at some point. And you'll notice here also there's a bi-directional link that I added just based on something that Tiago said, and that ended up becoming another note in and of itself based on my conversation with Tiago. So as you're noticing here with this connect piece, you're doing a combination of things. You're creating bi-directional links, you're using progressive summarization. And the thing that really I think trips a lot of people up when it comes to creating content is they try to take a linear approach. And you'll notice this all kind of seems circular, even though I'm putting this in this order of capture, organize, connect, and create. What you'll notice is that you're actually going to be doing all three of these steps at any given time. One of your mems will be in one of these stages. So now let's actually go and look at an example from scratch. First thing we're going to do is go over an example of using your notes to write an article. And we'll pull up another article from this What I Wish I'd Known series. And I have one that I'm working on titled What I Wish I'd Known When I Started My Career. And as you can see here, there was not a whole lot here yet other than my archipelago of ideas. So I knew that I wanted to use my conversation with Liz Wiseman. We've had her on The Unmistakable Creative twice. You can see here that I pulled out all of the different quotes. I also have notes from her book that I actually used in another article. And that's the other thing about taking notes this way is that in a network-based approach to knowledge management, knowledge is a renewable resource, which means that just because you've used it once, it doesn't mean that you can't use it again to create something else. Then I have notes from my friend Tim Klein's book, How to Navigate Life. And then I have a bunch of other notes right here. So now when we start to put together this article, it's no longer a matter of starting from scratch. I have a bunch of notes that I already have that I can use to lay the foundation for this article and then it's really just about moving pieces around and spending a lot of time editing and massaging it. So it's more of a bottom up approach than say, for example, outlining an idea for an article and then saying, okay, now I'm going to write this section, then I'm going to write this section. The beautiful thing about this is it allows you to write an article in whatever order your ideas come to you. And this is something that became very valuable to me when my friend Jennifer Loudon told me this. She said, your structure has to be linear, but your process doesn't. And that's the beautiful thing about creating content in MEM is you can take a nonlinear approach to creating content. So now let's go to another example, which is outlining a video from scratch. So you'll see here that I have MYO YouTube video. And if I click on that, you'll see that I have a bunch of different video ideas here. So let's just take this idea on how to design workflows to aggregate information in MEM. And let's start putting together an archipelago of ideas. So you'll notice here, it actually gives us a bunch of different notes here. Obviously, this one is coming back with pretty much nothing but video ideas. But I know that there are a couple of things that I want to do, which is aggregate the flow of information, 
I have another note about how to aggregate or to automate processes. And we'll just go put in automate the flow of information for your output. Then we'll add another note on automate tasks where minimal human intervention is required. And then we have this automate delegate do framework that we have. So you can see here that before I ever start recording this video, I already have some semblance of an idea of what the notes that I want to use are. And then I can just start to go into these notes and pull different nuggets from them. As you can see here, I can say, okay, you know what? Let me just pull this stuff that is in bold and talk it through. You know, and you can see here again, I could really just take this entire article right here and I could just take the headers from this article or this note that is a note that went into another article that I wrote about automation. And I could actually use it as the foundation for this video about how to design workflows to aggregate information in MEP. And so that way, when we sit down to record this video or to outline or plan this video, I'm not starting from scratch. I have an idea of what I want to talk about. So I want to go through one last example here. And the final example I'll go through is how do you plan a podcast episode using your notes in MEM? So one thing that I do uh, with my best friend, Gareth, every Wednesday is we do an episode called The Unmistakable Creativity Hour. So I'm going to bring back a episode idea that we started working on. And so most of the time when we record these episodes, I really have no idea what the episode is going to be about, but I've got so many notes in MEM at this point. And this is what takes us back to that idea of a critical mass of knowledge. Once you get to an abundance or even a sufficient mass of knowledge, you can start to do things like this in a matter of seconds. This is an episode I planned out with my friend Gareth about 10 minutes before we recorded the episode. And we wanted to just riff on this topic of starting small and building a business with little bets. And so I had all these different notes that we could use, and these notes became the foundation for our conversation. All we had to do was talk about each one of these concepts a little bit, give it a bit of structure. And within 20 minutes, we were done recording a podcast episode, and it took very little effort. So the real power in creating content this way inside of MEM is it reduces the cognitive load. It basically prevents you from having to shift from one app, one app to another to find the information you need. But it allows you to spend more time planning up front, which reduces the amount of time it takes to execute. So just to recap all of this, there are the foundational concepts, which are you have to accumulate a critical mass of knowledge because networks compound the value of knowledge. You want to take notes that are written on your own words because those become knowledge building blocks that are like digital Legos. And then you want to separate, capture, and organize into two distinct steps build an archipelago of ideas, progressively summarize your most important notes, and then put them all together to create what you want to create. I know this has been a longer tutorial than some of my other ones, but as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't checked it out, I go into detail about how to do all of this in our free course on how to take smart notes.